Good morning YouTubers, this is take 685 and if I mess up I'm just going to keep carrying on because I'm sick of stopping the video and starting again. Um, this morning I'm going to do a, a different type of haul. Um, this is what I tend to pick up quite a lot but I haven't done as much lately because I've not been able to find it. As it happens, on Friday, David had the day off and decided that we were going to go to some antiques emporiums, which, to be fair, I never buy an antiques emporiums because it's ridiculous. I mean, if anyone's watched Antiques Road Trip, it, it is the most backward way around. Who, who the hell buys from retail to sell wholesale? Well, that's what they do. Buy at retail to sell at the auctions. They've bought it from the auctions in the first place. But they get a 75% discount, whereas us normal people don't get that discount. Anyway, I'm waffling. But anyway, I do like to go around ant antique emporiums because it broadens your horizons. You see different things that you've never seen before. You learn a lot. Um, I have a photographic memory, um, which means images and items that I see, I remember. The item. But I don't remember who it's by, how much it's worth, and what it is. <laughs> So I wing it a lot of times. I'll see something and think, hmm, yeah, I've seen that before. I know it's something, but I don't know what it is. So, yeah, that's how I work. Also, another thing I'm going to tell you is I have a bit of a rule when I'm buying. If I pick something up, I think to myself, can I times it by five? Because to me, it's not worth it if you can't times it by five with the eBay fees and everything. The time you've done, you're only doubling your money anyway. So, yeah, I have a times it by five rule. Um, I might not actually times it by five when I accept an offer, but I'll put it on times it by five at least, if not more. Um, so first things first, we went to Sheffield, which is only half an hour away from me, but I actually know that there's quite a lot of antiques places in Sheffield and vintage places. It's just a nice little place to go around and everything's close. So yeah, if you want a day out, if you're near, if you're near it, um, if you're in West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, take a trip to Sheffield. Um, first things first, I bought this 1970s cane mirror. And it's an original 1970s. It's got velvet on the back, which is always a good sign that it's a real one. It might be earlier than 70s, actually. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's absolutely huge. It's probably three and a bit feet by two and a bit feet. It has got an issue, see if I can show you. Oh. Can you see that? There you go. But that is quite an easy fix. You just bend it back into position, put a bit of PVA on it, a bit of cat gut, which is like a clear, strong, um, like fishing wire. Tie it on, and then once it's set, Take your cat got off. Done. Sorry, I keep itching like a bloody dog. Like I've got fleas. Yep, so that's the first mirror. The second mirror, well, it's not the... I'm not doing it in order of buying because this was actually the last one that I picked up. This is an asymmetric teak mirror. This was also £15. Did I say that was £15? Yeah, that's that was £15. I'll probably put it on for £75. This one was £15 and I did put it on yesterday for £75 and I sold it for £60. I've let it go for £60 because if anyone follows me on Insta Instagram, Pound Girl Reseller, you will know that I've had the most diabolical October. And yesterday, if anyone had have offered me a pound for something, I'd have probably said yeah because I was that desperate. But it's actually, yeah, that's actually sold. It's going on GSP, which I'm really happy about because I love it when mirrors go on GSP because your art is covered. But to be fair, I do wrap them really well. It's going to America. Um, yeah, £60. So that's a good flip in two days. Um, the third mirror is upside down. <laughs> it's actually supposed to be wider at the top than it is at the bottom. Um, that was five ninety nine in a charity shop. Um yeah, that one from the antique centre, that one from the charity shop. Um, and I will, I think I've put that on at 65. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good profit. That should sell easy for 65. 
It's a plain bog standard one, not as nice as this one, but still, 65 is not bad. And the last mirror is, can you see, a large floor mirror. And it's a good quality teak one. That was actually a tenner. Um, I've not put that one on yet. I'll probably ask 85 for that one. Yeah, 85 I think. I do send the big ones as well. I send ones that are two metres tall. Yep. I'm a bit mental when it comes to mirrors, but to be fair, I have had a few broken and I've learned along the way. One tip for mirrors, um, pipe insulation, copper pipe and insulation, the grey stuff that's got that's round has got a split in it. Bubble wrap your mirror, put your pipe insulation round the edge because it's the edge, when they drop the parcel, it's the weight of the edge banging on the edge of your parcel that cracks the mirror. Yeah, I have had a few broken and I just usually, there's enough money in it for me to offer for them to get it uh, fixed. And it, it usually they do, they do they do get it fixed and I'll pay them. And that's that. Easy peasy. Next up is, I don't know if you can see that, this lovely chest of drawers. Now, as you can see, it's absolutely filthy. But it's so cute. Let me just show you these little cute drawers. Look at them, so cute. Apparently, the shitty brown furniture, as we all used to call it, is now coming back in fashion. So apparently by the end of next year, mid-century is going out, which I know anyway, and the shitty brown is coming in. So yeah, they were, believe it or not, 20 pounds, 20 whole pounds in an antique centre. To be fair, it was shutting down. And I didn't realise it. It did look half empty, but I just thought it was a crap one. But, yeah, it was shutting down. In fact, it shut down now. It shut yesterday. Yesterday was the last day of trading. So, yeah, I bought that for £20. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. No chips, no nothing. Just needs a wipe. Needs a good clean on the front. I'll probably use some white spirit because it's greasy and yucky. But, yeah, 20 quid. I've not researched it. I've not looked into it. But it's so cute. It could be a craft. Um, station a sewing chest anything like that um, it actually looks a little bit like an apothecary chest as well with the little drawers at the top um, I love the slant of handles on it I promise I'm going to make some better videos after Christmas because I'm getting a new camera for my birthday a sanitor because my birthday is in Christmas yeah so I don't know how much I'm going to ask for that, but it's going to be over 100. So quids in. Next up is I'm trying to show you everything with this stupid laptop. This bureau. Now I have actually had this and sold it before. I bought it for 25 pounds. I think the last one I sold went for 145. I think. It was about a year ago, and I can't remember the name of it. I think it's Eon, Elliot's of Newbury. I'm not sure. In fact, one second, let me just have a look in the drawer. No. Sorry, just checking to see if there were a name tag in the drawer. Sometimes it's in the inside of the drawer or on the back of the drawer. No, there's no name tag. So I'll do a little bit of research. It won't take me two minutes. And I'll find that it does need a bit of an oil, a bit of a sand, nothing major. It was £25. That mirror's reflecting really bad. Let me move it. Um, yeah, and I got one forty five, I think, last year. So I'm going to ask one forty five or even one sixty. Um I don't just sell the furniture on eBay, I also sell it on Vinteria which is a good site for selling on there. Usually the customers are um, interior designers. They're not really fussy on price. They want it right, but they don't want, they're not bothered about the price. So yeah, they have a budget. Um, it's slow, like Etsy slow, but you do get better money. And I just double my listings, put my listings on eBay, and then um, copy and paste, 
put them on Vinteria. Um, yeah, so that'll probably go on Vinteria. Probably sell on Vinteria more than eBay, I would have thought. Um, next up is... Hang on. One of these. It's an Indian folding brass top table. Now, I've wanted one of these for ages. Um, they don't seem to do that well on eBay, but in my auctions, they go for at least 40 quid just in auction. And I, I can never even buy one because I think there's not, not enough money left in it. But this was a tenner from the closing down um, antiques place. Uh, it's filthy, it needs a bit of tightening, but there's no wood missing, it's really nice, it's quite ornate, and it's an early one I think, I'm going to do a bit of research, but for £10, I don't know, I, I don't know, I'm going to get 100 for it I think, we will see. Next up is Record Unit, now, this is a lovely teak little record unit. It's on wheels, hidden wheels. I'm probably going to get some hairpins and put it on because <laughs> they always sell quicker. I usually sell record units like that. And they usually go for anything between 125 and 165 And that was 14.99. And that was actually in the charity shop. Um, so yeah, that's a really good profit. Always look out for record units, anything record at the minute, it's really in fashion. Um, the lamp, you see it? The lamp is by, see this is one of the photographic memory things. David actually spotted that and I went, oh yeah, that's something. Um, but I didn't know what it was. I knew it was Italian. I thought it was Italian. Um, but it's actually by Carl Zaloni. Um it was in the antiques place at £24, which I thought was an absolute bargain. I got a little bit knocked off. I got it for 20 Um, Always, always, always ask, what's your trade on this? Because they will give you a discount. And if you were in there regular, you'd obviously get a bit of a bit more of a discount. But don't ever pay the full whack. If these programs have taught us anything on the telly, we don't have to pay the full whack, whoever you are. Um, it's I think that's its original shade. You can't really see it from there, but I did put a better picture of it on my Insta. Um, yeah, twenty four pound. There's two on eBay for a pair without the shades for one hundred and seventy five. So I'm gonna ha ask one hundred and twenty five, one hundred and forty five for mine, and I think I'll get it. And I'll put it on Vinteria as well. Um, I think that's it for the furniture. I feel like I got more than that, but no, I didn't. Um, the other couple of things I'm going to show you is I got this Welsh wool jacket for a fiver. I thought it was in really good condition, but it's because it's black lined and it's actually got some wear on the shoulder, I can see. It's a bit threadbare there. And at the other shoulder, it's got a hole in. But I photographed this and I've put it on eBay with the holes. And I think I put it on for 65. It was a fiver. So even if we get 45 happy days and it's a is it a 10 12 12 14 12 14 so a really good size the other thing that i picked up is my favorite i picked up anyone on my insta will have seen these four original shell garage oh the light's really bad shell garage overcoats now, I was really excited when I bought these. I bought four for 30. That was in an antiques place. I bought everything they had. That was it. They just had four. Since then, I've done a bit of research. There has been some on eBay sold on bids and they went for crap money. And strangely, 
they were two minutes up the road. Also, a friend said she picked some up at Newark, Sam, Newark Antiques, um, Runway Monday, um, and she said they were cheap. And also, another friend of mine who has an antiques place, he says he's had loads in as well. So, obviously, in this area, there's been an influx of these jackets. Something's shut down somewhere. Someone's found these uh, new old stock coats and must have put them at a local auction or split them between a few auctions. I don't know. But anyway, to me, they are worth £75 each. Now, it depends where how you market it and who you market it to. I'm going to market these to the classic car enthusiasts, the um, rockabilly types, you know. They love all this original stuff. So I bought them for £7.50 each. £30 for the four. I've got two 36 inch chests and two 40 inch chests. What I was going to do was put them on eBay as one list and do that little drop down where you've got different sizes, but I could not work out how to do it. It used to be really easy. I've not done it for yonks. Um, so I decided, no, let's not bother. Let's just split them into two lots. So I put two lots, one lot for the 40 inch, one lot for the 36 inch, quantity two of each, and I've used different keywords on each title, so that should bring in more buyers. Um, I have got a few watches on them already, I only put them on yesterday, and I have put them on at £75 each, and they will sell eventually. Everything sells eventually. That's another motto for me. Everything sells eventually. If you have something on eBay for two years depending how much you've paid for it 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 might only cost you depending on what shop you've got how many free listings you've got it, it might cost you two quid what's two quid nothing and it will sell eventually everything always does so yeah keep the faith keep the faith I tell everyone to keep the faith and I don't actually keep the faith myself <laughs> I have a bit of a meltdown like I did yesterday on Instagram um, I think that is it from my furniture um, antiques emporium haul. Um, I've said erm loads in this video. Um, <laughs> so I will say bye for now. Happy hunting. Um, think outside the box when you're buying. Um, erm again. Erm, 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 erm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah happy hunting hope everyone's having a good october um speak to you next time